lovely people. I wasn't planning on recording just yet, but I came downstairs after doing my hair and my face. Mm -hmm. I'm going for glowy, glowy gold on this lovely rainy day. But look what I found. New stand. So that is my Berda 1 2021. Yes, yes. Could this day be any better? Oh, oh and there's a bill behind it. Ugh. Boo to bills. But yay to the magazine. Okay, oh, this changes my day now. Um, yeah, what am I going to do now? Uh, I'm going to rush through all of my chores that I have to do today. Uh, bake some cakes because uh, we are celebrating the twins' birthday today so it's going to be very uh, low-key uh, it also happens to be the day that they're having a christmas party at school which is why we picked today because then we can ride the coattails of the christmas party that they are having at school a little bit sneaky but we're going to make it up to them by uh, have for christmas they are going to have some extra epic presents but never mind. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm going to have to be very quick about getting those ready so that I can get my fingers into this issue. Right, so let me just show you what uh, weather is like today. So after the several couple of days of really good weather, we are back to normal. It is raining. It is gray, a little bit dull but that doesn't bother me. Why? Because I got sunshine in my eye because I used gold, gold eyeshadow today. And I've got red blossom lipstick and I'm wearing my owls. You know, it's, it's so bright red that the camera can't handle it. <laughs> so it's a really bright red um, owl sweater by Kate Davies. I needed it, I knitted it myself. Uh, back when I was um, better at the knitting game than I am now. But yeah, and I've got a skirt on. Yeah, ready to tackle the day, ready to carpe diem, ready to amor fati, ready to, you know, you know, all of the stuff, you know, tempus fugit, tempus a fugit. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about La Vie et Belle. So I tried it on yesterday and when I sprayed it on out of the bottle, I immediately got this delicious fruitiness. You know, I got a lot of apple blossom, a little bit of pear afterwards, and it just smelled gorgeous right off the bat. And I loved it. And so I proceeded to then do one, two, three spritzes. And after about an hour of that light floridiness and the dry down started uh, to happen, I began to pick up a lot more vanilla and caramel. My husband had to be around me about an hour after I had sprayed it on and he found it very overwhelming. He thought that, wow, that's a very sweet smelling fragrance. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you know, I like how it's delectable and feminine and all that. But he did say that it wasn't anywhere near as strong as the Marc Jacobs Decadence. But he did say that it was super sweet, which I agree with. It is very, uh, very sweet. All right. But let me tell you, it's a beast of a perfume. It is a beast of a perfume. I went to bed quite late last night, around half past 10, because I was editing videos. Um, I had two videos, the Vlogmas video and uh, the Birda 10 2021 20 video. But even then, the perfume was still going strong. Not so much with the fruity, um, the fruity notes that it started off with, but it was the, you know, the dry down, the vanilla, the praline, the caramel. So... Six hours later, when I got my, when I asked my husband whether it was still strong, whether the smell was still too strong for him, he was, you know, he said surprisingly that no, actually. And I got him to sniff my wrist because it was still on my wrist by that point. 
And he was like, he called it, you, you smell like rum fudge, which is a good thing. And he was okay with it. He found it charming much later on when it had reduced its intensity. And so I think that next time that I wear it, I'm probably not going to do three spritzes because I think that that was too much. But as the day wore on, it was just such a charming fragrance. And it stays. So I would leave a room come back to it, say maybe 10 minutes later, and I would catch the, you know, the smell in the room. And even my husband was like, I can tell which rooms you've been um, into this morning because when I walk in, I'm getting the vanilla smell of your perfume that you're wearing today. So it's got fantastic, fantastic performance, a beast of a perfume. I had, when I had my shower, I had to try and scrub it. I had to scrub it about three times to try and get the fragrance off because that's one thing my husband is just kind of like hands down. I like the way that you smell naturally, which is a, you know, a disadvantage of going for decades without wearing scent around him. So he's used to me not having any scent at all. So he's like, you know, at night when you come to bed, please, can we not have any fragrances or any scents on you? And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I totally understand and I accept that. So I have to make sure I scrub off any fragrances um, off of me. And, but when I was in the shower and the hot water poured over me, there was this, uh, poof, um, as the fragrance just went all around in the bathroom. And it was just really beautiful with its vanilla-ness. It has a slight muskiness, um, which reminds me of, I think it's per, like a patchouli type um, fragrance. And that sort of keeps it, grounded somewhat it doesn't sort of float all over the place like say the victor and rolf flower bomb which was one of the first ones that i tried which is so very light it floats up for me it doesn't have anything that anchors it down whereas this one did and i think that's what makes it uh, perfect even for winter and so during the day when i was wearing it i didn't get the sense that i was missing out on summer i just felt absolutely charming and just you know happy with being in winter um so i think that it does have the wintriness to it so i love it i love it i'm definitely gonna uh, be putting it on again i can see why it is uh why it is such a superstar perfume but i can see why it is incredibly popular and really well received it's such a lovely scent but the next time that i use it i'll probably use a little bit of it and so I keep on. So another thing that I see, uh, I feel with a uh, sense is with music. So I also get impacted. My mood gets impacted by music. So if I'm ever feeling low or down or whatever, I just put on some banging music and it's able to just get me up. So I'm quite um, an auditory person like that. But um, so some of the perfumes, they, uh, they attach a song to them. And with uh, Mark Jacobs' Decadence, right? The song that it kept on reminding me of was the Nancy Sinatra song, These Boots Are Made For Walking. So, you know, it's like, these boots are made for walking. Mm, and that's just what they'll do. And then, you know, it's like, one of these days, these boots are gonna walk. So very strong, very confident. Whereas with La, La Via Belle, when I was wearing it yesterday, the song that just kept playing in my mind with it whenever I caught a whiff of it, and I certainly had... Um, a lot of points during the day where there was a strong desire to just smell it. And so I had this constant nose to wrist moments. And whenever I did that, I immediately would remember this. Um, it's a song from the 60s by Frankie Lyman. And it's called Little Bitty. Sorry, there's a magpie on my bird feeder. <laughs> it's called a Little Bitty Pretty One. And it kind of goes like, mm, 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 it's it's such a it's such a lovely tune do go check it out and maybe you'll see what i mean um about it yeah but it's called little bitty pretty one and it's frankie lyman it's a 60s tune it's a very short tune but that's what it made me feel like and it's very it's the sort of song that when you hear it and you know whether you're sitting down or you're standing it's the sort of song that you just find yourself going like mm, 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 mm. it's not a song that makes you go like ah, 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 ah. you know it, it's it's 
<laughs> but yeah, that's what I felt like. But I had a really great experience with La Via Bill. So thank you. Thank you so much to everybody who also suggested it. It looks like we're on a good roll here. Um, yeah, so I am going to go and decide which perfume to put on for today, to try out for today. Um, something not on the fruity floral range. My husband did beg me. He was like, please, nothing very sweet today. And so I was like, okay, yes, yes. I, I will take that into account simply because you are being so patient and understanding about um all of this because it's a huge change uh, for him because I've never worn any scents or any fragrances in all the time that we have been together and suddenly I'm all like I want to smell like a jasmine I want to smell like a musk I want to smell like the green grass that has just been cut in some I want to smell like Lake Garda in Italy um, so I think he's uh, looking at me a lot thinking that uh, well, what have you done with my wife? Um, <laughs> so I'm just grateful for his patience. So I will take that into account. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, baking cakes now. I'm going to be baking cakes, baking cakes. The next thing is going to be up the cake. It's going to be fun. Uh, but I just wanted to very quickly explain uh, the birthday philosophy that we have. Uh, so because uh, in this household, we, we very rarely ever eat takeout. It's not a thing that we do. The only times that we have takeout is, say, for example, if we are traveling and we've got like a 24-hour a trip to from Leeds all the way to um, Lake Garda in Italy. And so we don't really have an opportunity to cook. So we'll stop by a McDonald's or a KFC. And the kids, for them, it's a huge treat. It's a huge, huge treat. But in our home, in our house itself, the only times that we would ever have a uh, takeout is maybe as part of a birthday celebration if a child requests it, which makes it a lot easier. Uh, so for this birthday celebration, they're going to be getting um, some McDonald's Happy Meals. And also we don't 
as a general rule, have any sweetened drinks like squash or pop. Um, in the house, the only thing that we have is water, filtered water. So pop and squash are a treat for them. So we'll buy some pop and, you know, like a bottle of pop. And for them, it's like, oh, it's a special, it's a special day um, and all that. And for them, it's a big deal when they actually get to eat junk food because it's not something that we eat a lot. So it does mean that birthdays are a lot easier to do if they want to have something special. Although it is quite uh, heartwarming when they have the opportunity to request uh, some takeouts, uh, junk food for like for the a birthday celebration. But they actually say, no, I actually want you to make the mac and cheese and I want you to do this and I want you to do that. And that's kind of sweet sometimes when they say, yeah, I don't feel like having uh, that. Yeah, so, you know, if you don't give your kids junk food, you can actually give them junk food on a birthday is the moral of the story. <laughs> so I made the decision that I'm not going to open the Birdo magazine today uh, simply because I just have too much stuff to do. And for me, when I get my Birdo magazine, I need to be able to just sit down with my cup of hot water, my pen and paper and my bullet journal and my little sticky notes so that I can uh, do the planning um and i know that the january preview it wasn't all that exciting but i have learned from the past that sometimes when i get the actual magazine and i take a closer look at something a little free zone of attraction may happen so i look forward to uh, browsing through tomorrow but uh, for the rest of the day it's just going to be uh, prep for the celebrations I mean, as I said before, it's so tricky being born in December because um, for us, always trying to figure out um, a day to celebrate it that's far enough away from Christmas to make it feel like it's a little bit special, but also not after Christmas when we've just got present wrapping and festivity fatigue, which would mean that we don't put in as much effort in order to celebrate um, the birthday. Somebody once suggested that we do a half birthday, which meant that do a birthday for them in June instead. But it just, uh, it didn't feel like it would be a good idea. So we just opted to celebrate the birthday in their birthday month. But they understand that they is celebrated on different days, simply because we want it to be completely separate to Christmas. And they're happy with that because that means that relatives and friends can't get away with gifting them one thing both for Christmas and for birthdays uh, because we make sure that they're two distinct celebrations. <laughs>
sit down. Come on, guys. Everybody sit down in your place, please. Oh,